like I promised, I came back. So, with party planes that was talked about in the last episode, or I guess in this case, a part of the episode, let's get in, into the Pokemon that we can now encounter on the party planes. So, cue the music. Starting things off is Hypno, the evolution of Drowsy. Um, this is a Pokemon that, honestly, not much really needs to be said about it. Um, it's meant to be a very nice special wall. And heck, even its attack and special attack stats are not to laugh at it as well. Mm, ish. The only big thing that it's really known for is the fact that it's meant to be a special wall. It's decent on how to take hits. Nothing else. I'm only recommending this Pokemon if you're looking for a catch em all spree, but since you probably already may have a Drowsy at this point, why wouldn't you want that in the first place if you already got one from before? But then again, I don't know how you guys have played the game, so I'm just going to just leave it at that, and then we'll carry on our way. Next up, Hariyama, the evolution of Makuhita. Um, like an opal with Hypno, not much really needs to be said about Hariyama. It's meant to be a really nice, physically offensive, bulky Pokemon. And yet, oddly, Hariyama is easier to catch than Makuhita. I never understood for why that is. I guess in a maybe they're trying to take pity on those and trying to have a decent fighting time, so they decided to just, eh, why not? We'll give Hariyama a better chance than for a catch em all spray, but, eh. But in all seriousness, Hariyama's not a bad Pokemon. If you want one, I definitely would recommend either Guts or Sheer Force for its ability. Though not so much for thick fat, personally. Don't get me wrong. Having moves being cut in half from, from both Fire and Ice type moves onto it may not be a bad idea. But experiment. I think you might find some use out of this if you choose a Hariyama as a member of the post game. Next up, Pyroar. This is a fire normal type and that, honestly, where was this Pokemon if we needed it from before? I have to say, I kind of like this Pokemon. I have a bit of a soft spot for it and I even tried using one on my team in the past, but the problem that I had with it is that the movesets that it learns are more on the physically offensive stats. I guess the only real big thing that really points out to it is that it has Noble Roar as a one of its own moves. It used to be a signature build, excuse me, signature move, but that's no longer the case. If you want one, I definitely would recommend Moxie for its ability, especially since that, well, it's the better the ability, isn't over the rivalry. But, um, oddly enough, your chances of having a male Pyroar is very similar to that of encountering a male Eevee. Well, excuse me, a female Eevee. Odd. But then again, this isn't all based off of uh, Pride, which is a group of lions, so I choose not to question it at this point anymore. Next up, an ear ambushes, like you saw from before, in Ultra Sun. Bravery, the evolution of Rufflet. Um, now I would definitely would say if you haven't gotten a Rufflet back then, now may be a good time to catch one if you want to use one for the post team. Um, Sheer Force or Defiant will probably be the better options to go for if you can choose to go for power over accuracy. The only big thing to really watch out for is that, like with many normal flying hay types, it has a number of weaknesses, and it can be hard to use it if the situation isn't called for in the correct way. A strange thing in, that I mentioned from before is that it's a male by default. How does it breed? I choose to not question it anymore at this point, but let's get on to a Pokemon that actually kind of sucks a little last ass. Uh, that is, if you're not playing Ultra Sun, but instead playing Ultra Moon, we have Mandibuzz. This is the more bulkier of the two. Um, like an opal with Vandibuzz from before, because I think that's how it's pronounced, I don't remember. Um, 
This is meant to be a very good tanky Pokemon. It's basically Umbreon, only better. Um, I definitely would recommend him either have big packs or weak armor for the ability, especially since that if you want to try to be a little bit more on the offensive side. Unfortunately, that's about it for where the positives end. If you're looking for a very good Pokemon that knows how to be a very good physically or especially offensive Pokemon, this is not your guy. That doesn't mean that that is worthless though. You might find some good use out of it, and I only recommend it if you plan on using this in your double battles as a tanky Pokemon. But other than that, stay away. What actually may be worth your time that actually may suck a little bit less ass into how it is, Primeape! A Pokemon head that can be found through tree ambushes, it's a classic fighting Hanson Pokemon, you know it, and you know it well. This used to be the fastest of fighting type up until I think generation 3 or 4. But what I can say is that it actually holds some pretty good usage. However, if you're going to be using this in competitive play, I definitely would recommend that you get Defiance for the ability for single player or Vital Spirit or Anger Point for double battles. If this thing gets hit with a critical hit, its attack stat will get a major boost thanks to Anger Point. Unfortunately, that could also lead to one of its greatest downfalls. Everything else about its stats. Kind of the same scenario when it's that with Zoroark. If it's a swing and a miss, it's very likely not going to get another chance, especially for how frail it is. Plus, thanks to Gen 6, it gained him a weakness to Fairy. How? Don't ask. But in all seriousness, I have a soft spot for Primeape. In fact, I used one in the past Let's Play and it served me well, and even to this day, it still <laughs> served me quite well in the past. A great Pokemon, but it can be sturdy if you don't know how to use it properly. Next up is Apom and its evolution of Abipom. Um, of course, Abipom can be found through SOS battles only. You probably get it at this point. Now, what's really weird is that Apom, like with some other Pokemon, it evolves through the use of learning a move at a certain level and then leveling up once after that, and then boom. This one in particular will evolve into Abipom with the, when it learns to move double hit. In fact, Having it as it is and makes it a really hitty good and physically offensive Pokemon. In fact, it even will be faster than Primeape for once it's fully evolved. Unfortunately, once again, that's about for where the real positives end. Sorry if I'm sounding very negative towards some of these Pokemon, especially when they're coming into the post game, but I just don't really find any good use for some of these Pokemon. In fact, the only best ability to give this thing would either be a pickup or technician. But other than that, I kind of see these as gimmick Pokemon, just for the for the fun of it. Next up, ugh, Emoga. Okay, we need to talk about this thing. Pikachu has had a lot of knockoffs. I actually consider this to arguably be the weakest. Hear me out on this. It's an electric flying type in that, well, it has good speed. It's got static and motor drive for its abilities. Sure. What's the problem? Practically everything else. You already have Pokemon that can practically destroy an Amoga, practically in its sleep. It's very frail, and it has a huge number of weaknesses that practically even gives Zapdos and Thunderous and the biggest question, why does this thing even exist? I guess sort of what really can make it shine through is the fact that, that despite the fact that it's no static, you can potentially have it be learned Nuzzle. I guess that's the only real big thing that you could say for this, but 
the other good thing that you can use it for it is with the move Volt Switch. This is kind of similar to that of U-Turn, only for more electric base. That's all I can really say about this particular Pokemon that can see some use, but yeah, this is about as good as you're gonna get. Next up, in SOS battles against Chansey only, Blissey. And you're not gonna use it. Okay, so Beast Attack on 540 is not a bad number. However, 255 of that is HP. In fact, to this day, it has the highest base HP stat out of all the non-legendary Pokemon. Its main purpose is going to be used as a special home wall with a lot of HP. Just don't take this in any hair battles against those and uh, practically punch those things lights out. Basically what I'm getting at is... If you want one, it's here. It's an SOS battles only. You'll probably already have one if you caught Chansey or even Clever from earlier. Or, never mind. In all seriousness, this is about as good as you're gonna do from right here if you plan on using this in casual battles. I guess if you really want to have something that's really good on a Blissey, Serene Grace is probably the best ability hit that I would recommend. But that's pretty much it. Whew. Huh. We're almost done. One more. How bad can he be? You are not bad at all, Scyther. Scyther is probably the best Pokemon that you're going to be finding out in the Pawnee Plains. Hear me out on this. This thing is probably one of the best physical sweepers that you will find. One of the best things that I can say about Scyther is the fact even if you choose to evolve it, You'll still have plenty of options on how to use his, his evolution of Scizor, just as about as good as Scyther. Their, their stats are the same, well, stat total that is, but they're a little bit more distributed. Your options are a fast physical sweeper that can do some great wonders for false swipe, plus with Technician, it gives it a boost in it for that matter, or a bug steel type that has more resistances, it could be slower, but it knows some better moves and that have fall off of well with a technician. No one will blame you for which Pokemon head that you want. It's right there. You know it. You know it well. It's a classic. In fact, if I remember correctly, Scyther was actually meant to be a contender in my top 100 Pokemon list back in 2016. Unfortunately, some things worked out a little bit differently. But other than that, Scyther is a very good Pokemon. If you choose to evolve it, doesn't matter. You still got some great choices to go by later on down the road.